Once again, giving all praise and glory to the Most High Power of Abraham, Yatazaka, Kwayaikwab, Most High Power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. As always, we're going to start with Colossians 3.17. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all by Hashem Mashiach Kelvashai, giving thanks to the Most High and the Father by Hashem Mashiach Kelvashai. So all that we say and do is going to be in the name of the anointed Savior, Mashiach Yahawashai. Our big brother, Hamashiach Yahushai, is coming back to judge and make war and set righteousness up on this earth forever and ever and ever. So, I want to deal with uh, humility. I want to give some examples of how we as the children of Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel, those of our forefathers, showed humility in a real way and even though we all have sinned and come short of the glory of the Most High, they still show humility in the broken and contrite spirit before the Most High. And that's what we ought to be at. So I'm going to look at examples. Um, let's go to Genesis 18 and 27 for Abraham, our forefather. Genesis 18 and 27. We can't go, you know. Back further than our forefather Abraham, who we all stem from. Abraham had a son named Isaac. Isaac had a son named Jacob. Most has the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob forever and ever and ever. And the memorial to all generations. So Genesis 18 and 27. And Abraham answered and said, Behold, now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Most High, which am but dust and ashes. Hear what he said concerning himself? And that's all we are. It's dust and ashes. That's how he approached the Most High, with humility. As he's pleading for Sodom. Remember the Most High said two angels destroyed. Listen, he said, poor adventure. Let me read it to you again. Well, let's see what the Most High said to Abraham first. And the Most High, what Mashiach Elishai said, if I find in Sodom, this is verse 26, 50 righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. Right? So, Moses humbly before the Most High said this. And Abraham answered and said, verse 27, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Most High, by Hashem Mashiach Yahushua, which am but dust and ashes. Dust and ashes. From the ground we came to the ground we go back to. Dust and ashes. That's humility. Peradventure, perhaps, there shall lack five of the 50 righteous, will thou destroy all the city for lack of five? Five, And he said, if I find there 40 and five, I will not destroy it. Now look at this, because here we are in the worst times ever in the world. The most wicked times in the world since the world began. And he spake unto him yet again and said, Peradventure, perhaps there shall be forty found there. And he said, I will not do it for forty's sake. That's forty people. This is five cities that he destroyed. How many people is in five cities? You got to understand this. That's why I talk about the Most High. I exalt the Most High. I elevate the Most High to the utmost. 
because this is what he could do. This is what he's going to do. Right here in this time, these last days that we're in right now. And he said unto him, verse 30, Oh, let not the Most High be angry, and I will speak. Peradventure, perhaps there shall 30 be found there. And he said, I will not do it if I find 30 there. If he can find 30. Right? And he said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Most High. Peradventure, perhaps there shall be 20 found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for 20's sake. But oh, holy than thou, you are. You will be part of that 20, right? So he would destroy it because you there. That's how it's going to be in this time that we in now. Worse than this because it's more wicked than it was then with Sodom and Gomorrah. This place is considered spiritual Sodom. Spiritual Egypt. Verse 32, and he said, Oh, let not the Most High be angry, and I will speak yet, but this once, peradventure, perhaps, ten, all the way down to ten, shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for ten's sake. If you find ten people within five cities, that's righteous. And the Most High went his way. <laughs> said, come on, Mashiach, let's go. As soon as he had left communion with Abraham, and Abraham returned unto his place. <laughs> Chapter 19 of Genesis. And there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, and Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early, and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, no, but we will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him, and entered into his house, and he made them a feast, and did bake unleavened bread, and did eat, and, and they did eat. Once again, Verse 1, and there came two angels to Sodom at even. That's why when you read Hebrews, the 13th chapter, in the second verse. Be not forgetful to entertain angels. Excuse me, strangers. So like you. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers. So like those two angels were strangers to a lot. But they were angels. For thereby some have entertained angels unawares. See? Genesis 19 and 4. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, this wicked city of Sodom, who passed the house round, both old and young, all the people from every court. And he called unto Lot and said unto him, Whence are the men which came in to thee this night? What are the men that came in to you this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. Hear this? Who is this that's asking to have sex with these men? Verse 4. But before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, come past the house round about. Both old and young, all the people from every quarter. You see this? See how wicked they were? And here we are in these last days. It's worse than that. With the sins and the, the, the abomination that's being done. 
so horrible. Most I said it shouldn't even be mentioned. All of our mouths is so terrible. That's why Revelation 11 and 8, it says, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where our power, the most high of my shepherd got shot, was crucified right here in America. It's called Sodom and Egypt for all the wicked, vile acts that's going on in America, and they promoting it. You can't deny it. So here they are asking to have sex with the angels. These are angels. But remember, beware to entertain strangers, for some have entertained angels unawares. So they look like men. They sat down and ate. You see what they did in verse 3? In the end it says, And he made them a feast, and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. Angels. You see? So, they're looking just like us. Just like me. And some of you out there. Verse 6. And Lot went out at the door unto them, and shut the door after him. We're talking about bring these angels out that we can have sex with them. Men, old men and young men. And said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Come on. How are you going to justify this? Say, do not so wickedly. Behold, now I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you. And do ye to them as is good in your eyes. I mean, Lot was giving up his two daughters. So these men wouldn't have sex with these angels who appeared as men. How you ready for that, women? Your daddy gonna give you up to a bunch of crazy men that wanna have sex with other men? That's what Lot just did. And do ye to them as is good in your eyes, only unto these men do nothing. For therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. And they said, Stand back. And they said again, This one fellow came in to sojourn, and he will needs be a judge. Now will we deal worse with thee than with them. And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot. He came near to break the door. They tried, they, now they want to get Lot. But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut to the door. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. He blinded them. He, bl he blinded them. They couldn't find the door. But you see how Lot had the love of the angels he offered his two daughters up. Let's go to Genesis 32 and 10. Let's see, 32. We'll start at 9. And Jacob said, O Most High, of my father Abraham, and power of my father Isaac, the Most High which said unto me, Return unto thy country, and lo, thy kindred, and I will deal well with thee. I am not worthy. So this is humility. This is our forefather Jacob, who was the forefather of the twelve tribes of Israel. This is what he said. I am not worthy of the least of all the mercies and of all the truths which thou hast shown unto thy servant. For with my staff I passed over this Jordan and now am become two bands. Once again, this is humility. Before the Most High. He said, I am not worthy of the least of all the mercies which is getting something that I don't deserve. Over and over again, this is mercies. 
and of all the truth, all your laws, Most High, which thou hast shown unto thy servant. For with my staff I passed over this Jordan, and now I am become two bands. Crying out to him, say, Deliver me, I pray thee, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him, lest he will come and smite me and the mother with the children. And thou said, I will surely do thee good and make thy seed as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered for multitude. So he was getting ready to meet his brother Esau. And he was afraid that Esau was going to kill him. Why? Because of Genesis 27 and 41. When Esau sold his birthright to Jacob, because he was hungry for some red meat. So his father Isaac, during the time of his death, fulfill what the Most High said, the elder shall be a servant to the younger. So, how the Most High does it, remember his ways and thoughts are not our ways and thoughts. We don't have the mind of the Most High. We can't instruct him. But he make everything that he say he's going to do happen. It has nothing to do with what we think is right or wrong. It's his way of doing everything. So this is what it says. This is what Esau said. Once Jacob, our forefather of the twelve tribes of Israel, received the blessing of everlasting life. And he would live by the sword. Esau would live by the sword and had a fatness of the lands. That's why he's everywhere. This is his kingdom. This is his salvation. The last salvation that man, mortal man, will have on this earth. Because the next salvation, power and authority is going to be with Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. To the glory of the Most High. So, Genesis 27, 41 says, And Esau hated Jacob, see? Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father, Isaac, blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, he said in his mind, listen, the days of, of mourning for my father are at hand. Then will I slay or kill my brother Jacob. Reach you again. This is why Jacob was afraid when he was going to meet Esau because of this vow that Esau put out. Verse 41 of Genesis 27 chapter again. And Esau hated Jacob. That's his brother. Because of the blessing wherewith, wherewith his father blessed him, which is with everlasting life. And Esau said in his heart, he said in his mind, The days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then will I slay or kill or murder my brother Jacob. And these words of Esau, her eldest son, were told to Rebekah. And she sent and called Jacob, her younger son, and said unto him, Behold, thy brother Esau, as touching thee, does comfort himself, purposing to kill thee. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice, and arise, flee thou to Laban, my brother, to Haran, and tarry with him a few days until thy brother's fury turn away. So, this is what he knew. Until thy brother's anger turn away from thee, and he forget that which thou hast done to him, then I will send and fetch thee from thence. Why should I be deprived also of you both in one day? See, so, and that's why you look at, he made that vow, but he didn't kill Jacob when he met him. But at the same time, in Ezekiel 35, 